Hi, lovely internet friends. Hello. Welcome to Cabaret. Isn't it roasting? Are you using roasting? I am sweltered. My daddy's is ringing. Oh, it's like Niagara Fall under these two bad boys. Anyway, welcome to the show. Get yourself settled. I'll sing a wee song in a minute. This is the first bit of the show where I'll sing a few wee chilled out numbers. We're going a wee bit sort of singer songwriter a wee bit folky, that sort of vibe tonight. It's lovely. Um, this is a wee one from the 90s by Lisa Loeb. I love singing it, so I'm going to sing it. Get yourself sort of, get yourself a wee drink or a wee snack or something while I sing this song. Take your time, don't be rushing. It's too warm to rush. Swelter. No air con in here, because I'll have to talk. And sing it all. Right, hello. To get into the song now and stop worrying about being so sweltered. <clears throat> you say, help me hear what I want to. doesn't love a song about codependency. It's a beautiful thing. There are many, many of them out there. Welcome. I'm just going to, excuse me two seconds while I just be, when I click on this wee thing here, to see if I can actually see everybody who's in. I'm just joining. I don't really, sorry, Facebook and I, we're not, I'm not a huge fan, I'm not very good with the interwebs. Pierce is very good for that. But we'll see how we get on. Anyway. Um, welcome to the Cabaret Supper Club. We're here again this week in the sweltering heat. I'll stop talking about how warm it is soon, I swear to God. But honestly, oh my God, but warmer in here. I can't cook. Um, I want like you all to stick down below with the wee comments. Uh, what brings you here this evening? Just how you're celebrating making it through another fucking week and getting to Saturday. If you're having a wee drink, you're having a wee snack. If you've got on a nice frock. If you ordered something online that's just a wrap, whatever it is that you're doing to help celebrate Saturday, just stick it down in the comments. And whenever I work out how this fucking thing works, I will. Well, there I am. 
Oh, I'm really pretty, aren't I? <laughs> it is pure sweltering. Lindsay, Ruth, you're right. Jim, I'm glad you like that song. Thank you very much. Uh, you're very, very kind indeed. Uh, I'm going to make this bigger so that I can see your comments better. Um, so this is the first third. I'm just going to sing another couple of wee chilled numbers. I'll throw out a few wee questions to keep you entertained while you're in there. So you can either sit and feel smug, like, I know the answer to that. Or you can call me a dick because you don't know the answer to it. Um, that's totally fine as well. Or if you want to show off and engage with everybody else who's in the kind of room, then you can stick it down below and write your wee answer into the comments. Eamon said, purple shadow. Do you mean my eyes, Eamon? Do you mean my eye shadow? Eamon, that might be the sweetest thing you've ever said. That's really lovely. Um, Johnny McMillan says, like a big done up angel in white. So yeah. <laughs> Johnny, that's, I think that's the nicest thing you've actually ever said to me. Thank you. Um, if anyone tries to take a Christmas tree up my hole, though, I'm going to have words. It's not going to be the best uh, look for me. Um, this next song was actually it started its life as a country song. And then it was recorded by um, various different people. There's one version of it that's very, very famous. Your question and give yourself 10 points. If you know who was the original gospel stroke soul singer who recorded this first. All right, shall we? Let's do it. These gospel songs. That's good. It's like a new setup this week, so it's a bit contingent. We're all right, we're doing well. that 
midnight train to Georgia And thank you all. Your comments are so lovely and sweet and gorgeous. Um, I got reminded somewhere of their Mamma Mia night. Was I wearing this dress? Because I wear this to be my like person on a Greek island dress. Yeah. Thanks, Maria. Um, you're all answering in there. Look at you all. Hi, Rob. Hi, Karen. Lovely to have you back. Thank you so much for coming back. Um, oh, there's Lindsay Knight. You're all right. Love how you do. Um, you're all like. Gladys Knight absolutely like recorded that song. She wasn't the first solo gospel singer to record the song though. You're all gonna hate me and call me a dick. It was Sissy Houston, Whitney Houston's ma. She recorded it first and uh, it did really well and was a hit for her. And then Gladys Knight and the Pips re recorded it and made it massive international. But Sissy Houston's a homophobic old bitch, so frigger. Do you know what I mean? At the same time, we give him a take, but she's a very talented, very talented woman. I wouldn't take that away from her. Um, anyway. Uh, tonight's format is me singing a wee bit now, and then we'll have, this is like the opening, so while you're having your tea, we're chatting, we're in cabaret, and then we'll have the kind of variety bit, so I'll get some other people in to sing some things and do some things. Um... And then the last bit will just be me with my daddy's out singing some kind of boppy, dancey sort of tunes. Are we all in? Does that sound like a plan? I think it's a good plan. If you've any songs that you want me to sing at the end, like any songs that you know I already sing, like have a track to, you've heard me sing, or you know what I mean? Or even just like a genre, then stick them in there. If I miss them, Pierce, I'll keep a wee eye out for them. He's very good. Um, Because like, you know, I want you to feel included, but at the same time, don't be asking me for things. Do you know what I mean? Don't be asking me for Alice Cooper, because I ain't got that. Do you know what I mean? Stick with the vibe. Um, what else is happening? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I absolutely want to thank everybody who donated last week. It was so ridiculously, marvellously kind of you. Um, it was it, it was just it was really really lovely and um the messages that some of you sent while you were tipping were just really sweet and and heartfelt so thank you for me and the rest of the cast here we're really really grateful for your support i uh, want to shout out to catherine to julie roisin mandy diane shan brendan deborah jordan uh shireen connor tara arlene and kurt thank you all so much I'm only using your first names for anonymity, do you know what I mean? In case you're the sort of person who doesn't want other people to know that you're being generous. Do you know, for whatever reason, it's none of my business, that's up to you. Um, if you can give us a wee donation or a wee tip tonight, I would be again eternally grateful, as would everybody who's been involved in the show tonight. That would be wonderful. Um, be that five pounds, a pound, fifty pounds, whatever you have. If you've anything spare, throw it our way. We'd be absolutely delighted we can buy makeup and back and tracks and food and you know things like that i mean gone are the days of cocaine and rent boys we're just we're hunkering down now 
Um, if you can't, do not let that put you off hanging around and having a crack. Like, my God, I mean, we're all freaking skint. So don't be worrying about that. Hang about. Eat your massive bar of Jerry Terry milk deal. Or have a wee drink or do whatever you're doing. Um, this next wee song was uh, asked for by Phyllis from Carrick, actually. Uh, her niece is planning to come here and have a uh, hen party. I think it's postponed it now. Um, obviously, that is postponed. There's a plague. But um, she asked for some Dolly Parton, and I, the Dolly Parton that I knew, she was like, nah, not so much that. What else? And she was like, well, I want something kind of folky that kind of speaks of how one has to put the action into love. It's not just a, oh, yeah, I love things and people. So I'm okay. I'm a good person. It kind of speaks about how we have to actually do some work in order to kind of get that love out there. You know what I mean? Sort of a bit like how lots of white people are learning how not to be or how to be anti-racist this week. Quite important. Um, Phyllis wasn't talking about that, but I was. So she decided this song was going to be the one for her. Thankfully, I sort of know it. So here it is. Give yourself 10 points if you know who wrote this song. Stick it in there. This isn't a tricky one, it's actually just quite an easy one. When the rain is blowing in your face And the whole world is on your case I'll offer you a warm embrace To make you feel my love With the evening Which just gets me like right around here. I just I'm like, oh god, there's an ache. It's so beautiful. So who wrote it? Let's see. I'm swe- Do you see how much I'm sweltered? Look at this. I'm just going to be a puddle and a beard. I'm still a magnificent pair of tits later on. Who wrote that now? Who's saying? How can I send you if you quit? Love it. Hi, Maud. How are you? Thanks for dropping by. Um, Garth Brooks. Good, good, good choice. Adele. Also good, yes, she did recover it. Um, 
However, Dale is right. It was, in fact, Bob Dylan. Yes! The good Bob. Great man, like, for the old complexity, wasn't he? Um, so ten points if you knew it was Bob Dylan. Actually, I think the first person to ever record it was Billy Joel. His version's class. Have a listen to it. Um, so, we're going to start wrapping up this wee part of the evening now. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself another wee cocktail. For those of you who haven't been here before, I like to give a little cocktail tutorial every week. And this week, it's a little cosmopolitan. Uh-huh. Um, which just reminds me of Sex and the City, but I don't hold that against them because they're very nice drinks before those poor, horrible women ruined them for us. Um, so here we have a little martini glass. Gorgeous, isn't it? It's lovely. Some ice in there, so the ice is nice, nice and chill. Get rid of the ice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then what you need to do, as with every week, I'm all about the kind of cutting corners and not, you know, not putting too much effort into things, particularly when you're trying to relax. So what you do is you get somebody to go to Marks and Spencer's for you, and you get a wee tin. And you pour it in. Let's see. Into the martini. I mean, this is slightly fizzy. But we'll not hold that against it. Well, well, that's okay. And there you have a little Cosmo. Look at me. Oh, in New York in 1999. Mmm. Delicious. So, while I enjoy this, I'm going to hand over to the fabulous Kerry Quinn to wrap this section of the show up with another sort of acoustic -y number. Um, Kerry's actually going to do a pink song. Oh, which reminds me, hiya Claire, watching at home. Claire sent me a message earlier saying she was going to be watching with something pink and bubbly. So, um, I hope you mean like a drink and not an overactive twink in your living room. That would be too much, too much. Um, but Carrie's going to do a pink number for us that I love, that is wonderful. I've always loved it when she sent it. I'm not going to lie, I did cry a couple of times. Um, better than that, though, you're getting Libby, Carrie's daughter, as well. You're also getting Libby's dad, Paddy McBride. He's playing guitar and singing as well. So it's a whole family affair. Them in a driveway, singing the shit out of a bit of pink. I mean, it's wonderful. Give yourself 10 points. If you can name the artists who are credited on this track with Pink and enjoy it. Here's Kerry Quinn. Thank you. 
Okay, so that happened. Yep. Um, just look, can you see why I was gurning? Like, <sighs> Libby is so grown up now, you're right. I just love watching y'all, but Eamon, the guy who owns this place, it's just like, that's emotional shit. And it is, you're right. It's fabulous. And um, although written about an entirely different president, even more pertinent for this one, that evil, evil bastard. Um, and just hearing Libby's wee voice, Sing that with two fabulously supportive parents. Oh my god, I can't even cope. I'm going, I'm going again. Right. Um, the people who are co credited with that song with Pink are, of course, the Indigo Girls. If you haven't checked them out, you should check them out. They're a pair of folk singing fabulously kind of unruly lesbians. It's not to love. They're my favourite type of people. Always have been. Always will be. Um, uh, I want to thank you, uh, the, the people who've tipped so far. That's really kind of you. I can't see your names yet, but I'll give you a wee shout out next week. Um, it's really lovely. I always get slightly overwhelmed whenever people do that. It's really kind. Thank you so much. Um, as I say, if you can't, don't be worrying. Um, what you can do is actually share this feed. Um, there's a wee share button there. It's not like, oh, not that sort of share. We really do. We talked about this last week, and I would love there to be an actual share button. You click it, and everything just turns into share wonderful button to have what we do have is a little share button down there somewhere on the screen and all you have to do is click it you don't even need to like write a comment or anything just click it share it to the world if you're watching on youtube hello i'm sorry i can't interact with you so much but um you can share too you can share the link to the youtube thing on whatever social media you have or like text it to your ma or son you know what i mean i just want as many people involved in this as possible you know Good. Thank you. Um, let's see. Oh, <laughs> shit. Okay, so this next song I'm singing sort of as a dare. Because <laughs> that's how you put a show together, Ross. Yeah, <laughs> you just do whatever people dare you. My sister, who's class, um, and a wee bit scary. Like, she's no, she's no scarier than me, but I'm fucking terrifying sometimes. So... Um, Pierce is absolutely better, right? Whatever, like a piss has run down his leg here, actually. Just like he's very fond of her and she's very kind to him, but also he's fucking terrified, like he's standing here in a puddle. Um, I sang a song in Spanish a few weeks ago and she was like, You should sing in Spanish more. And I was like, Well, I don't know, really know any other Spanish songs apart from sort of Christmas songs and all of Gloria Estwin's back catalogue, but they're really hard to get tracks for. And she was like, You just need to sing something in Spanish. And I was like, Carly, I'm very busy, I have no time. She's like, Sing a song in Spanish, I bet you, you sing a song in Spanish and I'll. Throw a few extra quid into the tips. And as a whore for a tip or a donation, I'm going to sing you a song. Well, some of this song's in Spanish, some of it's in English, but I'm going to do it in Spanish because also I've been promising Jolene O'Hara of the Fabulous Songbird that I would do this one day. And so I'm going to do it. And it's a really difficult song and some of it's in a foreign language and I'm probably going to fuck it up, but just keep drinking it. It'll be fine. Soy, 
snow on during that period, did you do? You're a wee devil. Isn't it a wee devil? Production. Production up in here. Oh my god. <laughs> Human says you're a big gay show. <laughs> Human, have you seen my sex tip? Because that's the name of my sex tip. Big gay show off. Oh my god. Uh, thank you for watching that. Thank you so much. Um, oh, Karen, even your cat Tina's watching. I'm delighted. <laughs> Dale, I love you. You're absolutely tremendous. Um, so here's a question before we move on to the next bit. What did anyone remember what John Travolta called um, Adina Menzel at the Oscars just before she sang that song? Anyone remember? Type it in quickly if you're at your computer. It's um, at your computer. What age am I? At your computer. Um, yes, it was Adele Dazim. It's gone midway. I'm here to hear that more. Um, the next thing I have to do, very serious job, is I have to say happy birthday to the magnificent Jordan Humphreys. Do you have a little picture of Jordan? Look at her there. Jordan was nearly right on my face, which would have been very enjoyable for her. Um, the name of her sex tape right on my face um, Jordan is 29 today and very few people know that because she's very quiet about it she hasn't posted 744 fucking times on the internet about it over the last week there are people in outer Mongolia that know that Jordan's turning 29 today <laughs> fair play dear it's her day enjoy it I mean like Avengers Endgame had a last run up to it fair play to you girl you do you. Um, Jordan uh, is one of the presenters on Q Radio in the morning with the gorgeous Ryan. Has anyone seen him? He is an absolute pure ride. He's like James Corden. If James Corden were sexy and you didn't want to punch him in the fucking throat constantly. He's like that. He's really hot. I love him. Um, Jordan is also magnificently beautiful. 
as you can see from that picture. Um, she lives with the lovely Deborah, who has visited here at Cabaret many, many times uh, and been blocked, I think, almost every time I've had to pour that girl into taxis. Like, God help her. She enjoys herself. She knows how to enjoy herself. Lovely actor, lovely singer, lovely dancer. Something here. Fair play. Uh, and <laughs> uh, Deborah has been gathering decorations and preparations since March for this birthday. Here's to a heavy. Look, that's what Jordan came into this morning. Isn't that so lovely? I've never put that much effort into anything. Like, my master's degree, nothing. Nothing I've ever done has had that much effort into. Jordan, the happiest of birthdays to you. You're an incredible human. Um, I love that you're out there in the world being this beautiful, tall, gorgeous, model-esque woman who refuses to kind of fall into that category of pretty girl who tags along and things. No, no. Jordan is out there exploding those ridiculous notions every single day of her life and being the best crack whilst doing it. So fair play to you. The happiest of birthdays. You're awesome. And in order to sing you a birthday song, I have no one, I can think of no one better than the fabulous uh, Dr. Kira Mackey. Do you remember her from last week? Those of you who weren't here, Dr. Mackey... <laughs> Uh, is a singer and an actor and she works here in the cabaret club an awful lot when the pandemic hit she went back to her first job which was as an A&E specialist yeah. uh, she's awesome she's incredible and she's singing an Aretha Franklin song just for you give yourself 10 points if you know who wrote this song and performed it before Aretha changed the cultural landscape of the world with her arrangement and singing of it mostly by being an African American woman in the 60s who demanded respect Here's Dr. Kira. Had mentioned it. Happy birthday, darling. You should probably be more vocal about that because people aren't going to know unless you say. I mean, it was one year, I think it was the year I was doing pantomime in the SSE. That sounds like a brag, it's not. Um, and I peered up and went into work and uh, totally was halfway through being painted blue. And the stage manager, Natalie, came in and handed me a bottle of cava, and I was like, Thanks very much, a bit early on there um and she was like it's your birthday you did i was like oh thanks so it is yeah i'm an asshole anyway we're moving on now into some 90s crack now the eurovision we missed the eurovision this year they had some semblance of it it was dreadful uh Eu eurovision in the 90s was as weird and wonderful as it is now it was just fewer countries who were more western and Ireland won almost every year because we're class. My favourite still, Neve Cavanagh. Neve Cavanagh's one. In your eyes. I love that song. She's incredible. Incredible. Um, but the UK didn't do too badly then either. Do you know? Um, and Johnny is here to sing you one of the UK's 
best known entries. In fact, the only Eurovision entry in the UK ever to get to number one in the charts in the UK, I believe. I might have just made that fact up. If I have just made that fact up, can someone let me know? Don't be alarmed by the video in this. The lighting makes Johnny look slightly odd. He's an incredibly handsome... Oh, is that starting me actually to say that? Sorry. But he is a well, good-looking man. The lighting in this just makes him look a wee bit odd. But the singing and the content, absolutely beautiful. Here's Johnny doing Gina G. Just an absolute gig. That song always makes me think of him, and it always did. I don't know why, but I think it was it was released just before, like he and I kind of came to know each other in school, and uh, I think he just always loved it. Anyway, I am bound now to sing. I think this is the last time the UK actually won Eurovision. Someone check that out for me too. But also give yourself ten points if you know the people who sang the name of the band who sang. This song. They're a British American band. I'll I'll give you that. It's also wild hard to sing, but sure. Love shine a light in every corner of my heart. Let the love light carry. Let the love light carry. Light up the magic in every little heart. Let our love shine a light. In every corner of my heart. Some trite Eurovision lyrics? You betcha. <laughs> Love shine a light.
Easiest thing I've done in a wee while, actually. Fair play to me. Who got it right? For it was Katrina and the Waves. Yes. Fabulous. They wrote it for the charity, the Samaritans, actually. Um, I'm just having a receipt. I'm going to chat for a minute. Um, yeah. It is. A, I mean, it's a fabulous old tune, to be fair. Like, fair play to me. Um, it harks back to that sort of innocent or more stupid time when you just thought I could just sing a trite song and sit and. Send my love out to the world rather than put so many effort into it. Do you know what I mean? Which, if this week has taught us anything, we need to do some work. Do you know what I mean? Because sending our love is actually expressed through being anti-racist, anti-sexist, anti-ableist, and all those things. That's what I'm learning about myself this week. I think it's important to share our little journeys. <laughs> it has been a week. Um, and whilst I've been mostly fucking furious... This week, in case you can't gather from my tone and my cocktails. Um, in order to stop the cauldron boil boiling over, I've been doing two things mainly. One is sitting in my back room, looking out at all the mad Protestants that live out the back of our apartments. Um, I mean, I could say they're mad Protestants. I'm dying about them. They're a great crack. Um, and I've also been watching Netflix. Now, they have two things in common, both of which are gardening, the Protestants and Netflix. They're wee terrace houses, they don't have much gardens, but by God, their stoops are sparkling, there's bleach everywhere, and CM flags, CM flags, <gasps> iron, pristine, they're absolutely beautiful, you couldn't fault them, well not for that, you know. Um, on Netflix, I have been watching, I think one of the most fabulous shows in the world, uh, it's called Big Flower Fight. Has anyone seen it? Look at this. This is the. This is actually the uh, one of the things that they have to make in it. It's a giant hair made out of grasses, I believe. It's fucking terrifying. Um, if you haven't watched it, you really need to watch it. It's basically a shot for shot uh, remake of Bake Off, but with plants and flowers, um, and even more gays, even more gays than on Bake Off, and also as a plus. It doesn't have Prue Leith defending Dominic Cummings. So, everyone's winning out of this. We see you, Prue. Your chunky jewellery and gorgeous glasses don't get you away with that shit. We see you. Anyway, really friendly show. I mean, it's competition, but it has that sort of, you know, friendly, lovely, warm vibe that it has. It's teams of two, and they're, they have to make different art things out of different types of plants. And then there's the presenters. Here's, can you stick them up there? Yeah, we have Natasha Dimitri and Vic Reeves. Who have all the warmth of a cup of tea you made four hours ago and forgot about. It's so weird. The oddest choice of anybody to host anything like this in the world. Like, I find her very, very funny, but like still. It's kind of weird, but it doesn't even matter. It actually makes it more interesting to watch. Uh, because then you have the contestants. There are loads of them. But here's a wee mixture. It's a mixture of gardeners, florists, sculptors from over Europe and the US. We have the hipsters here. These are, look at these two. They're achingly cool. Everything they make is achingly cool. But it's beautiful and really classy and they're really cool people. That guy with the longer hair there, just one there. Oh, there. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> he is so cool that he has a whole tooth missing from the front of his kind of set of teeth. And after about 15 minutes of watching it, you're like, maybe I could do that one. Like, that's how cool he is. He just makes it look cool. It's almost too much. Um, and we have, who do we have next there? Put them up there, please, for a second. These two rides. I think they're from the north of England. I can't quite recall. But they look like they could be from anywhere. Lurgan, Derry, Ards. Do you know what I mean? They have that beautiful British-Irish 
let's just cover ourselves in fucking creosote and draw on our eyebrows with a sharpie look that I love and will defend with my last breath. They're confusing Americans all over that continent. Fair play to them, but never change. I mean, they're shite at the flowers. No, I don't mean to put any spoilers in. But they're fucking so much crack. I love them. Who's next? Oh, this is Andy. She's a fabulous woman. Uh, she talks very openly in the show about uh, being trans and the relationship to her job as working with flowers and her transition. She is so cool. Um, she's also very, 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 very northern and cannot be bothered by anything. Like, literally, there can be plants falling down around another place, burning to the ground, and she's all like, oh, it's fine. I'll come with nothing. I've my bus fair home. I've had a lovely day. She's an absolute gig. Absolute gig. And then there's these two at the end. They are a father and son combo, and the dad's like a big old traditional sort of bloke who's worked outdoors his whole life, and the son's a homosexual with an anxiety disorder. I'm just watching how they've kind of supported each other and grown and loved each other and how well they work together. It honestly made my ovaries ache. Like, it was so beautiful. Sorry, Bex, I know you're sitting at home with actual sore ovaries. Um, they're wonderful. So you should watch this show. The problem is, it made me then think that I could maybe plant some flowers and get a green thumb. And then I realised, no. You live four stories up, you don't have a garden. Even if you did have a garden, you wouldn't know what the fuck to do in it, Ross, because you've killed every plant you ever had. And your hay fever is so bad this year that you haven't opened a window in about two months. So what the fuck are you going to do in a garden? I thought, right, I'll go to the internet and get all the people on the Instagram and all the lovely people who kind of watch the cabaret show to send me some pictures of their gardens and their plants and I'll feel much better about myself. So some of you lovely people sent me these. No. Nope. Oh, Pierce is having a wee. He got there. Yeah, well done, Piercey. This is Emma's back garden. Emma's back garden is apparently just all of Donegal. So she sent her two wains and her husband out to rake all of Donegal. They're going to be gone for quite some time. It's a clever plan, Emma. Well done. Who's next? Oh, that's all. There's lovely wee back garden, the short strand. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that wee bird box and all her dad made. Gorgeous. Skipping on. Lovely. Skipping on. Beautiful. Skipping on. Lovely. I'm getting better just looking at this. This is Bex's. Bex watches from Newry. Bex's back garden. Yes, you're right. That is Deccan you're looking at. It's gorgeous Deccan. A hot tub. And a view of the morning. She's most middle, she's middle class dream. I can't even cope. I'm so jealous of her back garden. It makes me actually sick. So that didn't make me feel better at all. It just made me really jealous. And I consoled myself with the fact that I don't have a garden. I don't have an outside space. I live in an apartment. So I can't have any of this gorgeous greenness around me and beautiful flowers and all that kind of stuff. So it's fine. And then the lovely Patricia, who is watching, I believe, from, uh, from Toronto. Hi, Patricia. Uh, she often watches, I believe, while she's uh, bleaching her bathroom. I don't know if you're bleaching your bathroom today, Patricia. You can let us know in the comments there. Um, but she sent me these pictures. Designed to Look at them. Next one. Just keep going through them, Pierce. Can't look at them for too long. I get angry. Uh, look at those. These are just the most beautiful flowering cacti, which are notoriously difficult to get to flower. And she lives like nine stories up in an apartment in Toronto. And yet still she manages to make that happen. So I just became a bitter bastard for all of Wednesday and Thursday. I couldn't look at anybody. I was just furious and raging at absolutely everything and everyone. Uh, until the glorious cat, who's watching from Wales, I believe, sent me this. <laughs> yep. That's what she's cultivating in her back garden. And I applaud. Can we close up in on that, Pierce? Till everyone sees the true magnificent... Did you make that close up, Pierce? Yeah. I can't see it. Do it now. There we go. I feel like I'm up to the opticians now. I saw, I saw it there. That uh, is called Ian. It's her thorny, spiky weed. She lives out the back. Ian, I well, I don't really salute you, but I salute Kat for keeping you and looking after you and for sending her to me to make me feel much better about my life. Thank you very much, Kat. You're class. I'm going to lift my drink to everybody who sent in those flower pictures to cheer me up. Thank you, Patricia. And <laughs> you are actually bleaching your bathroom. <laughs> Patricia's actually bleaching her bathroom, everybody. Fair play, I really appreciate that. Um, it is time for a song. It's time for Ray Campbell to sing a song. Before he sings a song, I want to give a little shout out to the Thursday crew from Scotland. 
Uh, we have Ricky, Fiona, Elspeth, gorgeous name that, isn't it? Uh, Sophie, Abby, Jordan, and Gran, Anne, um, who are watching all the way from Scotland. So thank you so much for watching. Ray sends his love, and he shows his love by singing one of the most hated and most loved songs at the same time ever in the world. Take it away, Ray. <laughs> Just a small town girl Living in a lonely world She took the midnight train Going anywhere Just a city boy Born and raised in South Detroit He took the midnight train Going anywhere Smoky room, a smell of wine and cheap perfume. For a smile they could share the night, it goes on and on and on and on. Strangers, hey, up and down the boulevard, their shadows searching in the night. To find emotions hiding somewhere in the night. Working hard to get my fill. Everybody wants a thrill. Paying anything to roll the dice. One more time Some will win Some will lose And some are born to sing the blues And though the movie never ends It goes on and on and on and on Strangers Playing Up and down the boulevard Their shadows Searching in the night Street night people Moving just to find an ocean Hiding somewhere in the night that song an equal measure it's a pure bop but also he cheers on me but he is fabulous at it and he's wonderful and my ma loves him loves him Ray my ma loves you she's dying about you she just collected gay wins now so watch yourself I'll have you in um, I just want to say happy uh, first wedding anniversary to Brian who I think from your comment you, you had your wedding here or an AMPM and then you had your uh and drinks and stuff upstairs in the treehouse afterwards. So the happiest of wedding anniversaries to you, a whole year, that's class. Good on you. Um, and Maud says, Ach, isn't that lovely? 
mods uh, should be up to say as soon as this place is open again. That's a, that's that's what we like to hear more of. Because I mean, fuck knows when that's going to be, but as soon as it's safe, we'll be open. Um. Okay. So the rest of the show, let me just talk you through it. The next ten minutes, nine minutes, is Gem and me in tense competition. Tense. We're being hateful hooers to each other, and uh, we're the competition this week is to guess the bad description of 90s movies to each other. Um, the stakes of the forfeit are high. Um, she's lost two weeks in a row, so her nerves are entirely wrecked the whole way through this. As soon as this is over, I'm spending the rest of the evening just singing songs that everybody can sing and dance along to at home. Are we all in? Good. Here's Gemma. And we're recording. Can you see that? I consent, I can see. Thank you, thank you. Who are we Diet Coke? She said, love we Diet Coke. Oh, give me all those preservatives and sweeteners. I'm going to have that. I feel very like, elegant with these slimline ones. Yes, they are very elegant, aren't they? Very elegant. I'm having a okay. day on Apple, but I'm not. Yeah, me too. I would love one. Um, I have a wee cordial here. Um, so, thank you, thank you. this week, we're explaining the plots of 90s famous commercial movies to each other. While we're asking the questions, Pierce is going to be typing them into the comments. So everybody at home, you can be sticking yours into the comments just down below there. Um, because last week when you were doing that, honestly, I nearly gave birth to something. I laughed that hard at some of your suggestions. It was joyous. Um, are you ready? Gemma? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is your forfeit for me the same as last week? Yeah. It is, okay. My forfeit for you this week <laughs> is um, I've moved away from social media. Good. Do you know, because I thought, too public, it's too public. So tomorrow, seeing as you're working, because I checked with our non-binary go-between that you're in work tomorrow, that you have to go to work dressed as a French mime artist. Um, and I work in city centre. Yeah. I have to walk to work. Um, yeah. Right? Oh, fuck. Right? You don't have to walk to work from your house. No, I'll just interpret it. Yeah. Oh, you're an actual dick. Right okay. Next, so, do you want to ask the first question then? Sure. Why not? Okay, go. Um, movie that gives evidence that Stockholm Syndrome works. Repeat the question, please. Movie that gives evidence that Stockholm Syndrome works. Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. You're a freaking dick. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> thank you very much. That was a really interesting question and I enjoyed its sociological implications. Your question, first one is, um, basically Hamlet, but with more singing. Lion King? Yes, it is! We both did Disney. We both did Disney as our first one. Because gay. Because gay. Which <laughs> is so gay. Well done. One each. We're doing well. I'm doing well for me. <laughs> That's what that means. Next one. Yeah. Okay. Guy gets friend zoned for 30 years. Girl finally falls in love with him and dies. Friend zoned. Oh, I hate that term. Um, it's a terrible term. I'd like to apologize. It says that it's okay. It's, I understand. I, it falls over them and dies. 
Is it Forrest Gump? No. Is it Bob? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't sit horizontal stripe. You can just go all black if you want, as long as you've got your white face paint on. Um, that's the main thing. I'll need a picture of you in just outside your shop. Thanks. Okay. Um, this is uh, it's a tricky one, but I'll just go with it. Early modern misogyny made sexy with teenagers in Seattle. Early moderns, like sort of the end of the medieval, just in case that helps. Like late 1500s. What didn't you say? <laughs> <laughs> This is why everybody hates me. Also, could I just say, well, A, yes, and I hope you get to learn from this, but B, 90s movies were all misogynist. That's true, yes. Can I have a clue? Is it like, is it romantic? Um, mm, yeah, yes. Yes, it's a romantic comedy. So, romantic comedy, misogyny. Want the last bit of it very quick? Uh, so it's, uh, a very old story made sexy with teenagers in Seattle. Uh, 10 things I hate about you. Well done! Yes! Only we, we were, well, I was looking through the 50p DVD section in work. Yes. I was like, hey, do you remember that? <laughs> See, there you go. There you go. I still have hope. A theatre degree okay. paid off. Well. Here we go. Fetish where hairdresser discovers people are dicks and you're better off alone. <laughs> Did everyone says her hands? Yes. That's a really, really good description of that. They claim to tell you the internet didn't even help me with that one. That's just oh, really? Hard. That's a brilliant one. <laughs> uh, I know the internet ones were crap, so I didn't even bother. I just made all these up, which is why, yeah, anyway. Um, <clears throat> my third one is okay. once again, capitalism ruins legitimate scientific pursuits, people die. Is it Jurassic Park? Yes! Why am I so delighted that you get in these? Because I'm shit. <laughs> right. Okay, so it's three each. Oh, I'm gonna book. This is what happened last week. Tie break. If we both get it, then let's just say neither of us have to do it because I don't want to sing no. that fucking song. And we'll both right. just relate some money to something. Okay, we'll do that. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you're gonna get this. Mm. <sighs> okay. Um, fed up office worker joins a cult in order to destroy the government. Is it the Matrix? No. No, it can't be. Is it? No. Yes. Because gay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm I'm free. I don't have to do a forfeit. Cool. Gemma, honestly, I've made this one easy for you. You said that last week. 
it's true. Right, come on. Mine's okay. through the room. Uh, the girl falls in love with her step sibling. Someone who's never had sex can't handle a car. I want to be on my mortis rods. <laughs> it's clueless. It's clueless. Ah, damn it. <laughs> yes. I am raging. Oh, my God. <clears throat> okay, fine. I'm so happy. Well, next week. If those forfeits, both of them still stand. Excellent. Love a roll over. Bring it. <laughs> Thank you for your time once again. And um, I'll get you, my pretty. Someday. Nano, nano. See you soon. <laughs> Bye, darling. Bye. <laughs> so. Because neither of us had a contingency plan for us getting the questions right, which all of you did too. You all were all over that. You're a virgin who can't drive. Yes, Claire and Patricia, I knew you enjoyed those. Um, Claire, you were all over those. Your movie knowledge of the 90s is kind of terrifying. Um, it's wonderful. Um, so because neither of us had a forfeit to do, I was actually quite relieved because rather than a silly forfeit, uh, what I did was I donated to the uh, Minnesota Freedom Fund, uh, as you can see there, uh, from both of us, um, and you can do so as well. Uh, if you go onto their Facebook page, they have a whole uh, list of other organizations that you can donate to as well. Um, so well done, Gemma. Well done, you all, for doing that. You are class. Uh, it's now party time. I've got some sparkles on. Um, you're correct in assuming I have nothing on under these sparkles. I'll let you just stand here in my pants and this. You're welcome. Uh, and I'm going to sing a song now by Aha that I sang at Lindsay and Twisty's wedding. Still brings me joy. Um, like as Lindsay was walking up the aisle, I was singing this. Okay. Um, and give yourself 10 points if you know who directed this famous video. Here we go. Mom. Mom. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. 
1990. to sing that song that was my choice i chose that i'm a dick um yes you're right steve barron directed the video and he also directed uh teenage mutant ninja turtles um this jacket is so warm it was ridiculous even though i'm wearing literally nothing else but yes uh whitney and mariah are here uh, the Lady Mariah and the Duchess of Whitney are here, as Dale christened them earlier. <laughs> Y'all are actually having me in fits tonight. I kind of cope with the pure crack coming out of you. Okay, next song. Keep dancing, keep the crack going. Um, this is an acoustic version, but it's still upbeat and still good crack, so you can still get up and dance or tap your foot or tap your leg and go, yep, whatever you want. Um, give yourself 10 points. If you just can name any reason why Rihanna is awesome. Any reason. I mean, there are so many. Just stick them into that, those, that comment section. Go on. Yellow diamonds in the light And we're standing side by side As your shadow crosses mine What it takes to come up
Medusa. I don't know, I'm knocking off for singing that song. I've sung that a few times in my life. But I just love it so much. It's class. And she is class. And all of your reasons for loving her. She dances in tables and chippies. It's wonderful. You're all right. It's class. She pissed off the DUP. One of my favourites was Victoria's Secret was going, mm, no, we're not going to have trans people or really dark-skinned people or any fat people in our shows. Uh... Or fashion shows around. I was like, well, I'm just going to start a fashion line and include all of those people and fuck y'all. Victoria's Secret, not so much doing their shows anymore. Rihanna, not a wrinkle out of her. <laughs> we love it. She's just awesome. And I will love her till the day I die. Okay. Someone else I love and will love until the day I die. Just getting my song on here. Uh, it's Kelly Clarkson. Just because she's class. Um, and this wee number is by no means my favourite. Uh, Northern Ireland was far from hopeless place. And it is far from hopeless place, you're right. And I like how you read that. You know, that's gorgeous, Maud. Uh, of course, she fell in love with it. How could she not? Um, it's a fabulous part of the world. Uh, this is by no means my favourite Kelly Clarkson song. In fact, it's one of my least favourite Kelly Clarkson songs. But it's just an old bop. And a great karaoke tune, I'm told as well, according to Dr. Kurt Terrell. So, um, we'll have a second. of it. We fucking number. That's me trying to be funky, it's not really working, is it? It's not fair. Here's the thing, we started. Shut your mouth, I just can't say 
Fair play there, Kelly Clarkson. She's great, crack. Oh, Dr. Bernie is bleaching that bathroom. I'm glad I'm helping fuel that, Patricia. Good for you. And I hope you're cacti are well. Please give them all of our love. We're very fond of them now, after getting acquainted with them tonight. Um, this next week's song is a uh, wee David Bowie number, isn't it? That's what I'm doing next, isn't it, Piercy? Um, before I sing this one, I just want to remind you all of all the other stuff that the fabulous people here in Cabaret are doing. Uh, we have Rosie's Disney Hour tomorrow between four and five, followed hotly by the fabulous Cherry on Tops Sunday Lock In Live. Uh, she's between five and seven, or half seven, or eight, or ten, or whatever she finishes singing. You get your money's worth like out of cherry. She just keeps singing. Well, um, uh, Marty Byrne, our fabulous sound engineer here, is still doing Song a Day for a Year. That's Sad Fay 2020. Follow him on Instagram and Facebook and the Twitters to kind of hear his new song that he writes and produces and puts out into the world every single day. They're class. Um, might start including some of them into this feed lineup. Some of them are just wonderful. For this sort of environment, they're all wonderful, but for this, I mean, you just get an absolute gay. Um, Fabulous Soup Du Jour is uh, running burlesque classes online via Zoom, um, and I think she's also doing a teaserama coming up very soon, so if you look at her social media for that, and our social media, we'll keep you up to date on all of those things. Um, this is a wee bit of David Bowie. Just, you know, because why not? While we're up to party. song also seemed appropriate for the week that's been in it, do you know what I mean? Two more wee numbers coming up. 
thank you so much for all your loveliness. Uh, Dan, I'm really glad you enjoyed yourself. Uh, Maud, I will get, on to the ti- get you onto the Titanic quarter and I'll go and I'll do a Titanic play again. But I did whenever I was 17. Um, which was only five years ago. Uh, Zoe, I'm really glad you're enjoying yourself. Thank you so much. You uh, got your toe tapping, that's all I can ask for. Deal, I am loving how much gayer you even are. <laughs> this. That's <laughs> so joyous. Thank you for joining in. Um, this next wee one, before I finish up, is a wee, uh, a wee Whitney number. I'm just getting it up on the phone here. Uh, well, it's a wee Whitney medley, because uh, actually Johnny McMillan put it together with, for me, um, about 500 years ago, like a long time ago. Um, and then Marty did this track to it. Uh, so I've always relied on the kindness of strangers. Um, I mean, they're not stranger, strangers to me, but they're strange. That's enough. Um, and this is just a mixture of Whitney's greatest tap your toe numbers. Do you know what I mean? Um, enjoy it. You'll enjoy it. Of course you'll enjoy it. It's Whitney. Clock strikes upon the hour and the sun begins to much everyone loves Whitney and Brian thank you my baps are pretty fantastic I assume you were talking about 
putting in Mariah here. Um, <laughs> thank you all so much. I just want to say thank you to everybody who contributed to, to tonight's uh, show. Uh, I want to thank Gemma, fabulous Dr. Kira, gorgeous Ray, stunning Kerry Quinn, um, the hateful but incredibly talented and beautiful Johnny, and of course, the fabulous anxiety ridden homo himself. Gorgeous Pierce. Thank you so much, Piercey. God help him. His nerves, whole nerves, Shrek. Yes, Stanton, and part of his own flesh now. God help him. Um, this is my favourite song to sing at the minute. So I've sung it the last couple of weeks. Greg, you. Um, <laughs> I just love it. So I'm going to continue to sing it. Um, and it's also a call to action. So rather than sitting about, you know, maybe thinking about doing something in the world. You could maybe, you know. Jumping. Good. Important. Important message for now. Thank you all lovely people. You say hi. Wonderful. I've had an absolute ball with you, so is Pierce actually to be 